Hey creeps, it's Cameron Chaney, author of Autumn Crow and your host today on Library Macabre. And uh, yeah, I uh, bought some more books. Oopsie. Okay, so I, I bought some books, yes, but I was mostly given books this month from uh, authors, publishers, I had my Nightworms package, and I also had some very, very nice gifts from some viewers that I was able to receive, which was very nice of them. I'm gonna show all of the books that I received, as well as the few that I bought, because yes, I did buy some books, I'm only human. I'm not perfect. But first, let's start with the books that I received from authors and publishers. So the first one I have here is one that I'm very, very excited for. And I, like I've, I've said a million times, I am closed for reviews. Authors, publishers, I'm closed for reviews. I keep getting emails from everybody still. I will let you know when I'm open, I promise. That being said, if your book is under 200 pages, if you have written a very short book, I will consider accepting it. So don't offer any big ass books because I don't have time yet. I will eventually, just not right now. But if you have a short little book, your odds are a little greater. So Donnie Goodman is a friend of mine and he just released a book. He is a book reviewer on Instagram. He has a really good Instagram account. He also has an awesome YouTube channel that I highly recommend called The Horror Hypothesis. He wrote a book and I'm really proud of him because uh, look at this thing. Like, look at that cover. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. The artwork is by Justin T. Coons, who is a great artist. And like the title itself, the razor blades in my head, that's awesome. And I'm so excited to read this. So this is a short story collection. And I actually saw that there are some like these, these teaser covers that Donnie Goodman posted where they're in like the fashion of old zebra horror book covers. I'm gonna post those on the screen so you can see. I'm really glad I decided to Google this book because I would have totally missed out on those awesome mock-up covers. They're really, really cool. Anyway, this is of course the official cover. And like I said, this is a short story collection and it looks all sorts of crazy. Like on the cover here, I'm seeing some evil snowmen, creepy kid holding a severed bloody head. There is a toaster crushing a man's head. There's a giant crab. Uh, there's a teddy bear with a knife and razor blades. It's awesome. It's just so cool and I can't wait to read this. So Donnie, thank you so much for sending me an early copy. I cannot wait to dig into this. I also received a book from Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing. This was unsolicited, so I didn't even know it was coming. Uh, so it was a nice little surprise. This one's called The Flying Nun, spelled N-O-N-E. I like the uh, the play on words there, obviously. Uh, this is written by Cody Goodfellow. Really cool cover, by the way. And this is like a um, weird fiction about a girl who joins a nunnery and all kinds of craziness happens. It seems kind of like, uh, it seems like there's quite a bit of humor actually just by reading the synopses here. So you can Google it and see what you think. Uh, it seems like if you like nunsploitation, you might like this. Uh, again, super short book. This is like 100 pages long, so it won't take me any time to get through. Speaking of short books, I have a few books from the Fright Vision series here by Culliver Krantz. So I recently did a Goosebumps recommendation video where I recommended some modern Goosebumps throwbacks, like books that are kind of harking back to the, the days of Goosebumps. And I mentioned the Fright Vision series. So I had already read like the first five books in the series and Culliver Krantz was like, hey, do you want the remaining books in the series? And I said, yes. So here we have The Attack of the Yellow Smart Sack. And I've actually heard some really good things about this one in particular. We also have The Cursed Coin 2, Broken Hearts, really love that cover. And we also have The Peephole. And I'm really excited to continue on with this series. I think Culver Krantz said there's still gonna be a few more books, so that's awesome. Uh, if you have kids who love Goosebumps, this is a really good option for them. And likewise, if you still have that Goosebumps loving kid inside of you like I do, you might wanna pick this up yourself. So those are all the books that I received from authors and publishers. I also have my Nightworms package though, so I wanna go ahead and break into this. So this is a big, chunky Nightworms package. I know that there's a hardcover in here. I'm only aware of one book that's included. I don't know what the other book is. And as I said in my last haul, when I unboxed my last package, that was gonna be my last sponsored package. This package is just kind of one last thank you package for the two and a half years that I have been 
a rep for the Nightworms. So thank you so much, Ashley and Sadie. I appreciate you both so much. It's been a wonderful ride being a part of this and I'm glad that your company is uh, flourishing and doing so well. All right, so as always, I'm gonna get into the goodie package first. So first up, I see Evil Tea Company. This one is Sacred Grove and it is peach apricot green tea. I love green tea. Green tea is my favorite tea. I drink it more than anything and I really love peach. So I'm excited to give this a shot. Okay, interesting. All right, so we have Carpenter's Farm and this is a serialized novel by Josh Mallerman with music by Chris Campbell. So this is a CD. Okay, so what I'm gathering is that Carpenter's Farm is a serialized novel that you can read online, and this is the music that goes along with it. That's pretty cool. I like the idea of, of music going with a book. That's really cool. So we also have a signed book plate from Josh Mallerman. This is for his book, Goblin. Spoiler alert, Goblin is included in the package, and we also have a, another signed book plate here for the other book, which I can't read the signature, so we'll just have to wait and see what the book is. We also have a little sticker here for Evil Tea Company. It says, give me tea or give me death. Oh, this is so cute. Look at this. This is a jar full of ghosts. I love it. I gotta see who did the artwork for this. The mason jar sticker is from Maddie Page Draws. I love that. That is so adorable. I think this could probably fit on the back of my phone. I might put this on my phone. We also have a bookmark here with the theme for the uh, June Nightworms package. Of course, this is from the Inksmith who does all of the packages. We also have a, another bookmark here from Encyclopocalypse Publications, who's fantastic. I love their work. And this one is promoting the despicable fantasies of Quentin Serganov by Preston Fassell. I probably pronounced all of that totally wrong. All right, here we go. Razor Blades in My Head by Donnie Goodman. Here we have a little uh, advertisement for that. And then we also have another little ad here. It says, Boys in the Valley by Philip Francassi. And then on the back of this, we have Ghoul in the Cape by Josh Mallerman. So I'm guessing that's his next book. And let's look at the books. All right, so of course we have our hardcover edition of Goblin by Josh Mallerman. Look at the cover art, freaking amazing. This is a novel in six novellas and this actually takes place in a single town, the town of Goblin. And in this town, it is just rainy and cloudy and foggy all the time. And a lot of creepy stuff happens there. So yeah, this looks awesome. I read Bird Box by Josh Mallerman and I'm just not really a big like post-apocalyptic fan. So I appreciated it for what it was, but it's just not for me, you know? But this sounds a lot more my style. So I'm super eager to read this. All right, and the second and final book we have here Oh, wow. This is Beneath a Pale Sky by Philip Francassi. And it says here that there is an introduction by Josh Mallerman in this book. Now, of course, not been on social media. I have not seen anything about this book. I have missed all of the new book news that you can possibly imagine. So I am way behind. I am just kind of finding out about stuff as I go. So this is a collection of short stories. I love short story collections and this sounds really good. And I love that cover. That's beautiful. All right, there you go. That's my last night worms package. Thank you again, Ashley and Sadie for sending me these packages for the last two and a half years. It's been awesome. Thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you so much. Okay, now we are going to look at another gift that I was sent from a viewer. And this viewer sent me an entire stack of Sweet Valley books. Don't worry, I have a whole bunch more horror to show you. I have some vintage horror, vintage young adult horror. So bear with me. I know some of you are probably like, oh, Sweet Valley again. I like it. It's fun. It's cheesy. It's entertaining. And of course, it's it's retro and that's what I'm all about. So anyway, I'm going to show you what Serena sent me because she sent me some really good ones. So here we have number 37 in the Sweet Valley High series. This one is called Rumors. And this is a first edition, first printing. And I was so happy that she sent this to me. It's in very nice condition. She also sent me one of these super thrillers. This one's called Deadly Summer. Again, this is a first edition, first print, which is really cool. 
and I'm really excited to read this. I hope I can squeeze it in this summer because it just sounds bonkers. I love that there are actual thrillers and horror novels sprinkled throughout Sweet Valley. It's just totally absurd and I love it. Speaking of, we have quite a few books in the Sweet Valley University series where the Wakefields go to college. And of course we have the very first thriller edition. This one is called Wanted for Murder. And yeah, basically uh, both of the Wakefield twins are wanted for murder. They're on the run. I mean, that's what happens when you go to college, right? This just sounds totally ludicrous and I can't wait to read it. Here we have another thriller edition. This one is called The House of Death. And then we have some of just the regular Sweet Valley University books, which sound absurd in their own right. I've not actually read any of these, but I would really like to. So here we have number three, What Your Parents Don't Know. Number eight, Home for Christmas. And number 25, Busted. She's about to have her purse stolen, obviously. Number 26, The Trial of Jessica Wakefield. And I actually flipped to a random page in this just to, just to see what it's like. And there's like talk of, of Jessica Wakefield having done cocaine and just all kinds of craziness. It's like, I don't know how this series got from point A to point B, but here it is. Number 28, Elizabeth's Heartbreak. Number 33, Out of the Picture. And the last Sweet Valley University book, this one is called Spy Girl. And stepping way back, we are going to the Sweet Valley Twins and Friends series. When the girls are very, very young, they're like 12 years old, they have no idea what's gonna happen to them when they go to college. If only they knew. Here we have Sweet Valley Twins, number 49, the twins' little sister. Here's number four, it's called Choosing Sides. And of course, number one in the Sweet Valley Twins series, this one's called Best Friends. Thank you so much, Serena, for sending me those books. You did not have to do that. And not only that, but she sent these books all the way from Canada, which I know must have been really pricey. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And now we're gonna look at some of the vintage horror books that I bought last month. So here we have what is basically a holy grail. <laughs> we have The Reckoning by Ruby Jean Jensen in flawless condition. I found this on eBay for about $20 which isn't too bad for a Ruby Jean Jensen book in this kind of condition. I try not to spend more than like 12 to $15 on these kinds of paperbacks. I prefer to just spend a couple of dollars at used bookstores, but I saw this and I knew I had to have it because it is a Ruby Jean Jensen book and it is in beautiful condition. So basically we have a Ruby Jean mainstay, which is a killer doll. Can't go wrong with that. Next is Water Rights by Guy N. Smith. This is another zebra horror paperback. This one's from like, I think 1997. Yeah, 1997. And most of their covers by this point were not too great, but I actually love this cover. I think it's really spooky with these dead kids with these glowing eyes very eerie. And of course, Guy and Smith is the guy who wrote Night of the Crabs. It's his most famous work. I also got a copy of The Summoning by Bentley Little. This is another zebra book. Of course, we've got vampires. And I also went back to Dark Star Books, which is in Yellow Springs, Ohio. This is the same bookstore I visited at the end of my very first book shopping vlog. And of course, I went to this bookstore and they were just about to close up. So I only had like two minutes to look. Didn't have time to buy anything. So I went back and I found a couple of really cool books. So first off we have Usher's Passing by Robert R. McCammon. This is a first edition hardcover. It's in perfect condition. This is totally mint. I have always wanted a copy of this book. So I was really happy to find this. It was $15, which is pretty decent for a first edition hardcover of this book. I also found a first edition hardcover of Headhunter by Michael Slade. This was only $10. Just look at that cover art. That you, you would not see this on a book nowadays. Like imagine going into Barnes and Noble and seeing this. It just wouldn't happen. Next, I have a couple of middle grade horror books. So first up, we have Five Minute Frights. This is by William A. Walker Jr. This was recommended to me by a viewer when I posted my, uh, I think it was my Goosebumps recommendation video. And they said that Five Minute Frights is not only a really fun uh, little like scary stories to tell in the dark style book, but it is also terrifying. They said that there is a story in here in particular that traumatized them as a kid and is actually really gruesome. And I think it was 
one about a scarecrow. Yeah, there's a story in here called Scarecrow. And yeah, some of the illustrations in here are pretty scary. I really like this one right here. A bloody hand holding a VHS tape that says Video Nightmares. This looks awesome and I can't wait to read it. And I actually wound up getting this for free because I ordered this in like new condition from some eBay bookstore. And when it got to me, the uh, envelope was torn. The book had gotten soaked in the rain and the book itself is kind of like all creased up and stuff. So I let them know and they went ahead and she gave me a refund and said I could keep this. So I'm gonna look for a better copy of this. Hopefully I can find one eventually, but at least I have a copy that I can read. I also ordered mega scary stories for sleepovers. This was from Thrift Books. It's book number seven in the series. I'm having a lot of luck ordering these from Thrift Books. I thought originally that it was gonna come in bad condition, but it looks like brand new. So I was really happy with that. I have almost all of the books in the series. I'm only missing the last, I think, two or three books and that's it. Moving on, I have some vintage young adult horror. So here we have a very rare book. This is book number three in the Bad Blood series by Deborah Doyle and James D. McDonald. The first book is called Bad Blood. Obviously, it's a very rare book. I was able to finally find one like a year or two ago for only like $10, which wasn't too bad, but I had no idea that there were a second and third book. I didn't know it was a trilogy originally until I saw this. So I immediately had to buy this. This was a little pricier. This was actually $20, but I've never seen a copy of it in my life. So it's, it's obviously pretty rare and I thought it was worth the $20 because the odds of me ever finding a copy of this again are probably pretty slim. I also found a copy of In Camera by Robert Westall and this is actually a point horror book. It's in very nice shape. This is actually another pretty rare one. I've never really seen this pop up before. I also finally, finally got a copy of The Doll, which is book number three, I think, in the Dark Forces series. I have wanted this book ever since I saw it in paperbacks from hell. It looks so creepy. Like, I'm gonna do a close-up shot of the cover so you can see the face on this doll. Terrifying. And I'm just so glad that I found a really nice first edition copy of this. So cool. I also got All Shook Up, which is by Nigel Robinson. And this is kind of a book in the Horror High series, which is by Nicholas Adams. Who, Nicholas Adams wasn't even a real guy to begin with. Uh, Nicholas Adams was just a, 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 a pen name for a bunch of ghost writers. There were only eight books in the Horror High series in the States, but then they continued it on in the UK for a few books and Nigel Robinson wrote the remaining books. So I was able to finally find a copy of All Shook Up. Uh, these UK books are super rare. I hardly ever see these pop up. So I was excited to get this. As for the other books that Nigel Robinson wrote for the Horror High series, I don't know. I've, I've looked all over for them. I have scoured the internet. I have not been able to find any. So <laughs> if any of you guys ever come across one, please let me know because I would love to collect all of these so I can read them. Uh, but for now, this is all I have. I was also able to locate a book in the Mutant Point Horror series. So here we have Dissolvers. I just love these covers. They're, they're so cheesy. They have that whole like uh, late 90s virtual reality look to them, but I, I love it. I really dig it. Of course, this is a UK series. They never published these in the US. So it's been a little hard to find these, but I'm finally starting to gather a collection of these. Next up, <laughs> I made an order from Thrift Books. And yeah, they um, <laughs> they lived up to their reputation with this one and sent me totally not what I was looking for. So here is Daughters of Eve by Lois Duncan. I love Lois Duncan. I've been trying to collect all of her books in these like uh, late 90s editions. The editions that I'm collecting kind of have this like late 90s slasher look to them. And that's the edition that I wanted of Daughters of Eve. Instead, <laughs> they sent me uh, the old like 80s edition, which I like. I like this cover. It's not bad. So when I opened this up, I was like, eh, okay. It's not what I was ordering. It's not the cover that I wanted. It's also not in the condition that I wanted. I ordered it in a uh, very good condition. Supposedly books that are in very good condition aren't supposed to have spine creases according to thrift books, but this one obviously does. Whatever, it's fine. I do like the cover. At least this is a good reading copy until I can find the other edition. But I also ordered Locked in Time by Lois Duncan. I already have a copy of this book with this cover and I hate this cover. I really hate this design. I wanted 
that, you know, like late 90s slashery looking cover. So I ordered this book thinking I was gonna get that cover and instead I got the same cover that I already have. And not only that, but the book isn't paperback like I originally ordered it. It's like a library edition hardcover and it's not in like new condition. It is covered in library markings and it's just n not good not good at all. So I emailed Thrift Books and they did give me a refund, which is cool. And now I have these. I don't need this because I already have this in a, in a better copy, actually. And from Better World Books, I ordered Point Horror, the R.L. Stein Special Edition. This includes all three books in the original Babysitter Trilogy. It doesn't have the fourth book, which I'm fine with because the fourth book Let's face it, it sucked. They sent me this hardcover edition, which is what I ordered, but I ordered this in like new condition and the spine is all faded. There's like, it's like dirty. There's like sticker residue all over it. It's not in good shape. This is from World of Books USA. I was able to contact them and they sent me a much, much nicer copy. So here we go. This is, this is a like new copy much much better so they pulled through for me in the end i was really happy with that i'm just so glad that i now have a complete set of these three special edition point horror books and there you have it that is my may book haul i hope you guys enjoyed this video please please don't forget to give me a like before you leave it's a free way to support the channel and i really appreciate it also leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought about these books uh, if you have nothing to say then just say hey creep down below i would really appreciate it even that helps. It, it helps feed the algorithm gods. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode of Library Macabre. Later, creeps.